I view contempt as a serious matter. But I will not jeopardize the ability of our prosecutors and agents to do their jobs effectively in future investigations. I will not be intimidated, and the Justice Department will not be intimidated. And that is Attorney General Merrick Garland testifying on Capitol Hill as the House Rules Committee is set to mark up resolutions to hold him in contempt of Congress this upcoming Tuesday, which could set up a full House floor vote later this week. House Republicans are accusing Garland of failing to comply with a subpoena by both the government and judiciary committees to turn over audio tapes of special counsel Robert Hur's interview with President Biden. Biden has asserted executive privilege in blocking the release of those audio tapes. Meanwhile, criminal referrals have been sent to the Justice Department recommending both Hunter and James Biden be charged with making false statements to Congress in their investigation into the president over alleged bribery, money laundering, and influence peddling. Joining me now in the Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman James Comer. Mr. Chairman, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. I've got a lot to get to with you. I want to first get your take on these audio tapes. You just saw Merrick Garland. He's not going to be intimidated by you or anybody else. Your reaction? Yeah. Well, look, Merrick Garland's done more damage to the credibility of the Justice Cabinet than Dr. Fauci did to the credibility of public health. I, I don't think anyone in America believes anything that Merrick Garland's saying uh, when he says that the Department of Justice isn't political, they're not treating Republicans different, differently than they're treating Democrats, and that they've uh, done anything improper or, in, or inappropriate with respect to the Biden investigation. We've had whistleblowers come forward with the IRS. We know from uh, notes with the Securities and Exchange Commission and different jurisdictions with the Department of Justice that there were multiple investigations by multiple agencies of the Bidens over the past decade. And in every instance, the Department of Justice has told the investigators to stand down when the trail got to Joe Biden. So, I mean, you know, what is the significance of these audio tapes? I know that you already yeah. have the transcript. Were, was the transcript, you know, manipulated yeah. or doctored? I mean, why do you insist on see, hearing the audio tapes? Because we don't have confidence that the audio, that the transcript is 100% accurate. We've already seen bits and pieces that would suggest that Merrick Garland's Department of Justice has altered the transcript. So if the transcript is accurate, why not release the audio tapes? The fact that Merrick Garland refuses to turn over the audio tapes uh, is, is inexcusable, and he needs to be held accountable. And hopefully this week, my House Republican colleagues will join Jim Jordan and myself and hold Merrick Garland accountable. We expect to get those audio tapes because this is a good test to determine whether or not Merrick Garland's Department of Justice has been honest with the American people with respect to their transcript. Well, I've been told that the transcript, things were edited out like ums and hums yep. and, you know, stuff like that. Yep. And it speaks to Joe Biden's capacity. There were two stories in the journal Absolutely. this last week, one titled Behind Closed Doors, Biden Shows Signs of Slipping. And then over the weekend, who's next in line after President Kamala Harris? As, as, as people are talking and wondering if, in fact, Biden is going to make it, uh, make it to the debate, make it to the election, uh, or will he withdraw? Will the Democrats demand he has to withdraw? Will they put Kamala Harris up or someone else? What's your take? You're in Washington. What's the scuttlebutt in terms of President Biden right now? Well, the reason I don't think Joe Biden will be replaced, even though he's trailing badly in the polls, is because uh, the Democrats in Washington don't like Kamala Harris at all. They would prefer Joe Biden over Kamala Harris. They would actually prefer someone uh, better that's more electable, but they've done polling and they've done polling. And believe it or not, Joe Biden polls better than any other Democrat. That's how weak the Democrat bench is in America right now. So I think the Democrats are going to stick with Joe Biden, but with respect to his his slip and his mental deterioration, uh, most people in Washington, including the Democrats, uh, don't have confidence that Joe Biden will make it the next four years if he were somehow to win the election. And we all wonder who, in fact, is running the show. We don't believe it's Kamala Harris. We believe it's some bureaucrats uh, in the Biden administration that are calling the shots. And that's very concerning. And that should be a major issue in this presidential election. Let me turn to your investigation and the impeachment increase, sir. You sent out criminal referrals this past week. Tell us about that. What does that get you and where is this going? 
Well, criminal referrals are very serious. In fact, Merrick Garland has prosecuted people uh, that were referred uh, criminally to the Department of Justice uh, during the Trump administration. So Merrick Garland's on record taking uh, congressional criminal referrals very seriously. Uh, so we're going to see how seriously he takes these that we referred here. What we have, Maria, is Hunter Biden under oath in a deposition lying. He perjured himself two different times, at least, uh, about Joe Biden's involvement and participation in schemes. Uh, we also have Jim Biden lying about th uh, the fact that Joe Biden met with Tony Bobulinski. Jim Biden testified uh, in his transcribed interview that they never met, but both Tony Bobulinski and Hunter Biden testified under oath that they met. So we know they met. Why would Jim Biden lie about that? It's all to protect Joe. We know from, from our comprehensive investigation uh, from Tony Bobulinski and Jason Galanis that Joe Biden was the central figure in the family's influence peddling scheme. The tens of millions of dollars that the Bidens took in from our adversaries around the world, which according to the Irish whistleblowers, they never paid a penny of taxes on, all of this happened because Joe Biden was the central figure in selling the brand and convincing the shady characters around the globe that, uh, that his family was essentially speaking for him and to go ahead and wire that money to those shell accounts. Okay, that's fair enough, but you sent criminal referrals for Hunter Biden and, and, and James Biden over perjury for lying to Congress. Where are the criminal referrals if that's all true? Where are the criminal referrals for FARA, for money laundering, for corruption, mm -hmm. for influence peddling? Where are those? Yeah. Well, we're just beginning, Maria, and a lot of those crimes that the Bidens have committed, the statute of limitations has run out. That was one of the complaints that the IRS whistleblower said when we had them testify in our committee. But we're going to deal with those, and we're going to deal with Joe Biden. Remember, this is an investigation of Joe Biden. Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, uh, Eric Sherwin, Devin Archer, these are all witnesses in an investigation of Joe Biden. This was always about Joe Biden. Now, we're going to do everything we can to hold Hunter Biden and, and all the different shady associates accountable. This is just the beginning. But the next step will be accountability for Joe Biden. I think everyone that's kept up with this investigation will be very eager to see uh, what the next step is. This is the first step, these criminal referrals. Everything that, that we refer to the Department of Justice is within the statute of limitations. In fact, there's five-year statute of limitations. So if Merrick Garland's Department of Justice doesn't take this up, uh, in an appropriate manner, then the next administration and a new attorney general certainly can. The investigation's already been done. And with these criminal referrals, we published a 60-page report of nothing but hard evidence that no one has, has uh, made a comment uh, in disputing anything we provided in the evidence. Okay, so these criminal referrals will stand for five years, beyond potentially yes. Merrick Garland's time there and Absolutely. Biden's DOJ. Um, are you saying that we could expect a criminal referral against Joe Biden for money laundering? Is that what you just said? Well, I, th I think that it's no secret Joe Biden's committed many crimes, and I think that you're going to see a, a report very soon. Uh, that report is imminent. Uh, that'll probably be an interim report that uh, that updates everyone on the crimes that Biden and his administration have committed throughout this investigation and through the, the years of the Obama-Biden uh, administration. Well, you have subpoena power. Why not subpoena these people as well? Put them in the hot seat. We've subpoenaed, we've subpoenaed all the associates. The only person we haven't talked to is Joe Biden. As you know, it's hard to subpoena a sitting president or the Democrats would have done that to Donald Trump. But I think that what we've done in all of our depositions okay. and interviews has been very substantive and it's going to be very useful in accountability. Mr. Chairman, we'll be watching. We so appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.